Well, Agafish is a young guy, right? I mean, he looks like he's 16. No offense, Agafish. Uh, he looks like he's 16. I think he's 28. Who knows? He's probably 22. I don't know. What can I say, Phil? Asians don't race. Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish. I'm recording this really late, so if it seems like I'm a little low energy, uh, it's because I, I don't actually know why I'm filming this right now. I just felt like it. Before we dive into your questions, two little updates. One, I said in my studio tour video that I'd be putting some stuff up for sale on Reverb. When that video went live, I was still kind of sorting through what I actually wanted to put up on there. And so there was nothing on the store, but there are some listings there now. And I'm adding new stuff like almost every single day. So make sure you're following the store. Stuff is going really quickly. The UPS store is very confused. So thank you for your support. And it makes me happy to see all this gear go to such good homes where it'll get more playing time and be used to create some awesome riffs. Two, I just want to plug our Discord server. I do it at the end of most videos. I thought I'd do it near the beginning. It's a really chill community. It's active. We talk about all sorts of stuff, whether it's guitar related or really, really not guitar related. It's just a lot of fun. So if you got Discord, join us over there. It's really chill. All right, all that out of the way, hit that like button. It actually really helps out. And now let's jump into your questions. Augustin Ignacio Martinez says, Happy $1,000 electricity tax. I just love the review you did to that amp, meaning the Triamp. Could you do one of the Soldano SLO 30? Yeah, the Triamp, it's kind of a beast. Nine preamp tubes and six power tubes. RIP my power bill. Totally worth it though. It sounds so good. But yeah, I've been kind of really into amps lately and Soldano is definitely on the list. Like it seems like compared to everyone else on YouTube, or on the internet for that matter, I really haven't played through that many amps. I mean, to be honest, I really only started taking gear seriously after I started the YouTube channel. Like when I was actually in a band, I had my 6505 plus 112 combo. It was loud, it had distortion, loud and distortion, that was good enough for me. Plus I didn't really have money, so I went out of my way to not look for any gear. But yeah, so the Soldano SLO keeps coming up as one of those legendary must try amps. Like it's the inspiration behind the dual rectifier and the 5150 and basically modern high gain as we know it. You are the father! I told you! I told you I was the I've never played through one. I'd be surprised if one even existed in China when I lived there. The import fees were so expensive, wrong voltage didn't have the same universal instant recognition as like Marshall. And before I get shat on in the comments, like, oh, Soldano is a better amp brand than Marshall. What I mean by that is even non-guitar players see a Marshall, know what it is, and know that it's a good brand. If you're not a guitar player, chances are you might not even know what a Soldano is. Anyway, so Marshalls were rare. I, I don't think anybody imported a Soldano. Anyways, point is, gotten more into amps recently, Soldano's on the list. And this year, through boutique amp distribution, Soldano's making somewhat of a comeback. Not only are they taking social media more seriously, but they've also improved the actual amp. They've made the background tube noise quieter, and the effects loop is now usable, thank goodness. But apparently, tonally, they haven't changed it at all. It's still the original, highly sought after Soldano tone. They just made the amp more usable in 2020, which is really cool. Now, the question is SLO 30 or 100, though. I'm kind of siding with 100. First of all, I love the big, high wattage amps, not just because it makes my internet PP look massive. Maybe it doesn't make such a big difference on mixes, but just playing through them in the room. My personal preference is to have more headroom. I don't particularly like distortion coming from the power section. And I just find it way more inspiring when your tone has that low end chunk, even though it generally gets cut out of the mix to make way for the bass. Anyways, the 30, it's the more practical amp. And also the 100 is like $4,000 and the 30 is like 2,600. So bargain, I guess. Really makes you wonder why modelers and plugins are so popular. <laughs> Anyways, both of them sound amazing. Robert Baker has a video on the 30 Rubia with the 100. I mean, it is a dirty, dirty sounding amp in the best of ways. But yeah, I've been talking to Boutique Amp Distribution. They've asked me what I want to try. Honestly, they have so many cool brands. Diesel, Friedman, the Synergy modules. I can't decide. I just straight up want to try them all. So I'll throw it to you. What do you want to see? practical generators of awesome tone, straight up amp porn, let me know what you wanna hear. And by the way, dude, I'm glad you enjoyed the Hughes and Kettner unboxing. What's funny about that video is you're not the only person to refer to it as a review video. I don't really consider it like a review or even a demo video. It was literally just taking these awesome amps out of the box, doing a few chugs, kind of a first impression thing. And it was pretty cool to capture the reaction to the first chugs on camera because Oh my god, yeah, I mean, they're a ton of fun. But yeah, there is no produced track. 
I didn't really go through any of the features. Like with the Grandmeister and the Black Spirit, they've got all these built-in effects, MIDI control. I mentioned them, I didn't really go into any of that in detail and you guys still really enjoyed it. In fact, a lot of you guys seem to like it more than the actual uh, in-depth, well thought out review videos. I mean, it still didn't get as much as like guitar reviews, but these casual plug and chug videos don't take nearly as long to put together either. So it doesn't hurt my feelings as much when uh, nobody watches them. Bollocks. But yeah, it was a ton of fun. So my question to you is, should that be the format for a lot of these videos? And I guess amp videos in particular, going forward. Not all of them, I still like writing the demo tracks, that's actually a big reason why I got into creating content in the first place, was to challenge myself to regular riff writing practice, and so that part is really fulfilling. But yeah, when it comes down to it, I try to make this channel just a collection of content that you want to see. So, let me know. Have you seen the new Jared Dine signature Stingray? I mean, it's not quite a solar single cut, but yeah, I did. It's okay. I'm kidding. It does look quite sick. You guys know I'm all about those black beauty stylings. The basic spec, low down, 699 modified version of the Sterling Stingray. Mahogany body, bolt on maple neck, maple fingerboard with a 12 inch radius. It's the only Stingray with 24 frets, which I know is very exciting to a lot of people. Two point trim, kill switch. I love how they've taken inspiration from the metal zone and combined the volume and tone into this one dual control that's further away so it doesn't get in the way of the picking hand. Custom voiced pickups. I mean, it fits into that theme of sleeper signatures that I like in that you look at it and it's just a nice looking guitar. Whether you're into Chugs or into Jared's content or not, it's not Les Paul, so it's not 100% my thing, but it's still cool as a guitar and I think it's a very important signature model. Like Ernie Ball is a very big, very important company in the guitar world. So for a YouTube guitarist, I mean, he does play in a band, but he's best known for making YouTube videos. For him to get a signature model from Sterling is huge. And not only for him, but also in terms of legitimizing the YouTube guitarist. It's also like, I remember when 10 Styles of Metal came out in 2014 and just absolutely blew up. And I've never met the dude personally, but I feel more connected to his journey and because of that, more excited about this signature than a lot of the ones coming out for the traditional big name artists. I don't know, this just feels like a very significant step for Jared Dines and for the platform. I'm just really happy for him. As for a video, I do see your requests. I mean, loads of people have gotten theirs already. Fluff, Matt Hafey, The Do. Again, just to clarify, I am not the do, so I didn't get one. I think Sterling may still be waiting on that Majesty video. So I'll try and finally just get that done, and then afterwards I'll hit him up and we'll see what happens. Because honestly, it's one that I'm really, really interested in trying. And before we get to the next question, I want to give a huge shout out to Jaden Bass. I got it right this time. My bad, dude. And the rest of the amazing patrons for making this and really all the content possible. Can't thank you guys enough for sticking with me during these really uncertain times. It really does mean a lot. If you like what I do and want to directly support the channel as well and get bonus extras like MP3s and tabs to all the demo tracks, link to join the Patreon community is in the description. And now let's get into the next question. Hunter, where are the Pringle coils? Yeah, I really do want to make Pringle coils a real thing, like a legit pickup set. Pringle coils, Pringle buckers. <laughs> She's like, are you talking to me? What's up, you good? You want a green bean? I've actually been talking to Toman a little bit about having the Seraphim set available to buy separately. Like right now it's exclusive to my out of stock Harley Benton signature. And I think that's a shame, to be honest. I'm really proud of how the set came out. The bridge pickup in particular with a custom blend of Alnico and ceramic magnets. I mean, there's a ton of attack. It was built to be really precise and cut through in high gain scenarios with the ceramic flankers, but still maintain a level of natural warmth with the Alnico. I mean, it's just a really great uh, budget friendly pickup set. And I'm all about more affordable options for great tone and great music, he says after just talking about wanting to try a $4,000 Soldano. But in general, outside of the occasional treat yourself moment, I'm all about more affordable options for great tone to create music. But yeah, very early stages, let me know if that's something that you're interested in and whether you'd like to see more custom designed options like Pringle coils. I gotta tell you, it's moments like these, I really miss pulling the top right. Musa Yohamed says, Okay, Hunter, I'm not sure if you've covered this before, but how the hell are you making the katana scream like that 
such juicy fat tones. Yeah, like the katana is actually really good, especially given the price. It's super convenient, plus the boss guys are awesome, sponsoring an extensive series of Epiphone reviews. They're super into guitars and contributing to the online community, just a great company to work with. And to be honest, I'm not really doing anything crazy with the katana. My settings are lead channel, variation one. I answered this in the comments and I said it was variation two. Sorry, I lied, I thought it was two. Nah, I'm on variation one. Gain at five, bass at seven, mid at three and a half, treble at four, cab resonance set to modern, and I've got the built-in boost on. It's not as good as when you use it with like a, a tube screamer and a custom IR. That's when it starts to get really solid. But Boss wanted to show off what it could do plugged directly into the DAW through USB without the need for even an interface. But yeah, it really does benefit from a tube screamer if you got one. And you can say that about a lot of amps, to be honest, like even the super expensive dual rec. Basically, if you don't have one, get a tube screamer, they're just super useful in general. And what am I listening to this week? This week I've been listening to Shavoham by Tritonal pretty much on repeat. It's not metal at all, it's completely electronic. Um, I don't know, I just find trance really interesting. It's the way that trance is constructed, it's like adding and subtracting layers and harmonies around a theme to create a journey. And in that sense I've learned a lot from trance about creating cohesive progression throughout a track. Plus our gym finally reopened and I love listening to trance when I run. It's like I'm running through space and time. But yeah, this track in particular is just really chill, puts me in a good mood. I'll leave a link in the description. But now of course it's time to hear from yet another adoring fan. It's the high praise of the week. F you and your clickbait mud. Well, what I think you should do is turn around, get out of my office, and we'll pretend this conversation never happened. Whoa, not cool. Who would hate on Pringle? What kind of sociopathic serial killer hates on a golden retriever? So, so uncool. And that'll do it for this week's episode of Ask a Fish. If you enjoyed it, do me a massive favor. Hit that subscribe button. It's a big red button down there. Also hit the bell for all notifications. Leave your thoughts on anything discussed and your questions down below. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.